Hello, you are welcome to Online Healing Crusade. We are so glad to have you again tonight. Now, we believe the Lord has been blessing you if you have been joining on this um, Online Healing Crusade. And if this is your first time, this Online Healing Crusade is still going to take place tomorrow because um, uh, we, take, we have it every day, 6 p.m. GMT plus one. So you are invited tomorrow and next month. Do you have any person who has um, a sickness or a challenge or anything? Probably uh, science can't handle it anymore. Bring the person online. Bring the person for online healing crusade. I know by the grace of God, the power of God will touch that person. And the person will be healed as long as we believe. And God sent his servant with his healing anointing. And told him to preach the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he's been confirming that word. And tonight is another night. And God is coming your way. Hallelujah. Through this video. Do you believe God is going to touch you today? I believe you believe. Hallelujah. Uh, without wasting time, join me to welcome the servants of the Lord tonight again. Evangelist Louis will not tell me from Kodari. As he brings the word of the Lord to us. With the power of God back in his Right from his very throne of grace. Stay tuned and God bless you. Praise the Lord. Thank God for another opportunity to bring you the word of life again today. Um, I'll be reading from Luke chapter 4, from verse um, 33. Luke chapter 4, from verse 33. And in the synagogue, there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil and cried out with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? And thou come to destroy us? I know thee, who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuking, saying, Hold thy peace, and come out of her. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst of them, he came out of him and hurt him not. And they were all amazed, and they spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power, he commanded the unclean spirits, and they come out. And the fame of him went out into every place of the country round about. I want to skip a little and then get to verse uh, 41. And uh, what does the Bible say in verse 41? Or verse 40 rather. See, now when the sun was setting, all they that had any sick person with diverse diseases, he brought them unto him, and he laid his hand on every one of them and healed them. And devils also came out of many, crying out and saying, Thou art Christ, the Son of God. And he, rebuking them, suffered them not to speak, for they knew that he was Christ. And when it was day, he departed and went into a desert place. And other people sought for him, and came to him, and stayed him that he should not depart from them. And he said unto them, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also. For therefore am I sent. Praise God. Now, I want to talk to you today on power and authority over evil spirit. Now, look at what this place said. It said, Jesus spoke with authority. Verse 36. And they were all amazed and speak among themselves. Say, what, a, what a word is this? For with authority and with power, he commanded the unclean spirit, and they come out. That, that's the strange thing there. Everybody was surprised that how could he just tell them, go and they go, come and they come? Huh? They were amazed. Now let's get to Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10 from verse 1. After these things... The Lord appointed other seventy also, and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place where he himself will come. Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, and the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of harvest that he should send forth laborers into his uh, harvest. Go your way. Behold, I send you forth as lamb, uh, lambs among the wolves. All right, let, let me just keep some. And let's get to verse 9. Verse 8 and, verse, and into whatever city you enter and they receive you, eat such things as I said before you. Verse 9. And heal the sick that are there and say unto them, The kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. Then let's go to verse 17. After the people have gone now and they came back, 
Verse 17 says, And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpent and scorpion, and over all powers of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirit are subject unto you, but rather rejoice, because your names are written in heaven. Now, I want to compare this with Luke chapter 4 that I just read. This is Luke chapter 4, the other one is Luke chapter 10. Here it was Jesus manifesting the power of God, and the apostles were watching to see as if he's a wonder man among them. But then, in Luke chapter 10, he gave them the same power. He appointed 70 and empowered them. He gave them authority over unclean spirit, that they should go out and deal with unclean spirit and evil spirit. That would say he gave them power. Are you getting what I'm saying? To tread on serpent and scorpion, and to do that over all the powers of the enemy. You see, the power that he gave them include both authority and dynamis. The one that the devil have is just ability, does not have authority. Let me explain the two. If you see a policeman, whether a woman or a man, just stretch his hand and say stop to a vehicle, and then say to another vehicle, pass, and that one is passing. The one that is stretched soft to, it may be a trailer, and a man, macho man, is driving. But because the person that says stop has authority to say what he's saying, that man will match his break. To be able to obey the authority of the person that I've just spoken, whether it's a male or female officer. Once it's a transport officer or traffic or officer that is saying that, he has just had to obey. Now, actually the vehicle can crush that man and kill the man. Because the vehicle and the driver has the ability to crush that person. He doesn't have enough power to be able to say he can stop the vehicle. But he uses authority. So why did the man stop if the man is not mad? Before they gave him license, they must have taught him that when you see this hand, what does he mean? This one, what does he mean? <laughs> and if you now do anything contrary to that, it means you know the law. You just contravene the law. Mm -hmm. That person is not representing himself. Now he's standing and pointing to you. He's representing the government of the country. They are the one that gave him the clothes he's wearing. That uniform is evidence that he has been trained as a police officer and he has the right to say stop or to say go. So who gave him the authority? The nation, the government. Who is going to back up the authority? The nation, the government that gave him that. Are you getting what I'm saying? No, so ability talks about physical strength. Authority talks about legal power. Hallelujah. But you know what? A man of God and a believer should have the two. You should have both authority and ability. The devil has ability, but it does not have authority. Uh, so that woman is using authority to stop that vehicle and all that, and they have to stop because they are obeying the authority of the government that is backing him up. Now, another thing I need to say again is that um, the devil, I say, does not have what authority, but has ability. Let me use another thing to explain. <coughs> if you see a policeman, or let's say a military man, because of the kind of way these things are done in my country, so I'll use the example of my country. If you see a military officer that is well dressed and full of guardia for war, and he's a superior military officer, and then you now see an armed robber who just quickly came to town to rob a bank. The armed robber has a gun. And because of that gun, he will begin to command everybody, lie down, stand up, move away from that place, blah, blah, blah. Everybody will be obeying him. Because of what? They saw him carrying a gun. Why are they obeying him? They know that that gun has some ability. That gun, when it is shot at somebody, can be the end of the life of the person. 
So they are scared of what they have seen. And so they obey under duress. But when a military man who is a military officer gets on the scene and everybody is running away from an armed robber, he's not going to run. He's trained to stand at alert and then cock his own gun, gara, ka, ka, and be ready to face the guy. Are you getting what I'm saying? So he has, because the uh, armed robber is holding a gun, the military officer is also holding a gun. They both have ability. This one, this gun can kill, or this one, or that gun also can kill. That's ability. Destructive ability. Are you getting what I'm saying? But one is illegal. The armed robber is an illegal person. Carry that gun is even illegal. And then the man that is a military officer who wants to counter it and then arrest the man has both authority and ability. The authority he carries that the government of the nation is backing him up. That guy, the only backup he can ever get if, is if you have another gang. Maybe you can have about four or five of them that came for the robbery. That's a minus that. That's the end. But the military officer has authority and has ability. So when he says, stop, you are under arrest, blah, blah. And if the person does not stop because he doesn't want to obey the authority, he wants to be an outlaw, the guy has his own gun too. Are you getting what I'm saying? So there may be a shootout between the two of them. This one is having ability, this other one is having ability. The one that has the authority, if eventually he outgun the guy, the arm robber, and then can arrest him, you go and drop him under the law that he has been caught doing this and this, he will face the law for that. So the same thing, when a man of power, a man that is having authority in the realm of the spirit, say, devil, I command you, stop your activity in Jesus' name. He has to stop, not because of your stature, not because of your complexion, not because of your gender, male or female, not because of your race, black or white, but because there is an authority in the name of Jesus. And when you use that authority, demons obey the authority. They have to obey. They must obey. That is how we operate the way Jesus operates. Because he has given us the same power that he is executing and he was using when he was here. He gave the same power to us to use in his name. I remember many years ago, I was ministering somewhere. And uh, there was this person that had epileptic spirit. And... Um, you know, when, when that thing is going to come upon her, she will, uh, she will just move and swell around, are you getting what I'm saying? And then fall down and foam will be coming out of the mouth and people will start running away. Are you getting what I'm saying? So I look at that and uh, I was called upon to come and be, uh, because I was part of the ex officio. I was formerly president, uh, and then later maybe evangelism secretary. But as at the time they called me to come and be part of this uh, uh, a new committee that was set up to cast out them. <laughs> so when I was put on the team, I just laughed. So the first meeting we had, I told them, I said, uh, "Sorry, sir, you are the one who is chairman of the committee." But uh, to me, it's an insult for me to come and sit down here and be discussing about how to cast out them. Is that the reason for a committee? I never see committee in the Bible when they want to deal with a devil or they want to do anything. If you want to do building, you can have building committee, but I don't see demon committee. Are you getting what I'm saying? So I say, I can't be a part of this, but please can you give me the name of the lady and the address how I can locate her? Because you, all that you have said that uh, she used to have uh, all these things manifesting whenever we are having meeting in the church, I've been president of this fellowship. Nothing like that happened. Yeah. I know what operates here. If the power of God is moving, we are worshiping, we are doing whatever. Well, demons can manifest. Then you deal with the demon when they manifest, not that you come and have a committee over it. Mm -hmm. So I said, I'm not going to be a part of that committee, but it's not that I'm trying to be proud, but uh, give me the name of the lady. Let me be able to locate her hall, wherever she stays. So, and they gave me, fine. So what I did to the lady is that, uh, committee or no committee, you always come here. I'm in my final year, 
and I don't have much uh, work to do uh, this semester. So I teach part one, part two, young people that have just come up. So I can impart them with another level of fire. So I always tell them to gather here. So you can join them together. I had that is when preaching or teaching is going on that these manifestations always come on you. I see you as a very gentle sister. You don't have any problem as, as far as I'm concerned. But let's wait till the day that I will be preaching. And then that thing will manifest. That's when I will manifest. I don't like to clack patients. I'm not a doctor. I will have given you a sheet of paper, give you this questionnaire. Who first of all did this in your family? When is this thing started? What are you? I don't like that. I don't like story story. I like action. So you keep coming here, right? Anytime you come, you meet me ministering to people. Join us and minister. Then let that thing manifest. I want to see the way it manifests. That's when I can manifest. I know I have the power of God, but I'm not going to enforce a demon to come out of you when I've not seen one. But let me see the day that manifests. I want to see that epilepsy manifest. But just keep coming. So thank you, sir. She kept on coming. Anytime I'm having something, I'll share with them, two or three of them, some five, some ten, just young ones, empowering them with the things of God. So one day we finish the one that I do in my room in PG Hall, and then I now had another meeting in uh, uh, among the staff, the staff quarters, Road 9, House 1, staff quarters, University of Israel. Nigeria, I can never forget. <laughs> so we were there in that place, and then I was to minister again. A lot of people were seated. I was to minister. So I was ministering on salvation. Sozo, S O Z O, was the meaning of the word salvation. It means to be healed, to be saved, to be delivered, to be empowered, to prosper, and all that. So I was expounding that scripture. After we finished, I said, Now, this is all you have if you are born again. But you may not know. You may only say on being going to heaven. And you don't know it includes all this. Now that you have known all this, let's begin to confess it. Since I'm saved, it means I'm also whole, I'm healthy, I am this, I'm delivered, and all that. Why we were doing the confession? The lady started manifesting. For us, we just turned around and then fell down. And was by my side. I watched it like washing film. So this is what they are talking Before you know it, foam was already coming out of the mouth. Oh, Shaba Lila Kadus. So what am I going to do? So I want to spray it down. Only goes inside and say, keep on. It's not talking time. It's manifestation. You said, if she manifests, if the demon manifests, then you will manifest. Now you manifest. I said, but I will not manifest. I just spoke. I will not manifest. He said, you have just read the book of E.W. Cain, The Power in the Name of Jesus. Okay, or wonderful name of Jesus, whatever it is. But it talks about the name of Jesus and how to use it. So I said, yes, I read that. I said, use it now. Just command in Jesus' name and don't mention it twice. Because that book that I read, the end of you Kenya, you said that uh, if you say in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, seven times, eight times, the first one you said is faith. The remaining is unbelief. If you believe the first one, you won't be doing it. So I didn't speak the name of Jesus twice. I just spoke it one, one powerful one. In Jesus' name! I kept quiet. And the lady stopped for me and stop wrangling, stop moving psh, as if it's stiff. Mm. I said, God, something has happened. I said, don't worry about what happened. The demon is just obeying the mention of the name of Jesus. At the mention of that name, every knee must bow. So he's obeying that scripture. But well, it does not mean that the demon is out yet. I said, so what do I do next? I said, you have not commanded the demon to leave. Mm-hmm. Just mention Jesus. Okay. Say so now, tell the demon to leave and tell the demon never to come back again. Serious one. So, and I gave the next command. In the name of Jesus, I command the demon of so 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 epilepsy to get out of this lady now and never come back to her again. And I kept quiet. The lady just got up. Look for her scarf because we tie scarf. Those ladies, they tie scarf and those they say, Look for the scarf and then tie the scarf. I say, Everybody, let's worship God. Hey, hallelujah. Ah. So, everybody was just worshiping God, so we will not be looking at that. That was it. Mm-hmm. Everything is gone. The yeah, little see never came back again. In fact, the parents came to meet us on campus to thank us. Now, that thing has been doing her a long time. She now came back home and said, Some people pray for her on campus. I said, yeah, we are here by His grace. <laughs> That's part of our courses, yeah. <laughs> is, our hobby is casting out them. <laughs> we speak in tongues a lot, and then we cast out them. <laughs> the mother was so happy. But that was all. 
Well, what is my point? When you rebuke the devil, you are acting on authority. The devil is bound to obey you. Don't say it as if you don't mean it. Say it as if you mean it. Expect him to obey. And he will obey. So I just said that Jesus name once. And that was the end of it. You understand? At different times I have had to use that name again and again for that same kind of problem, epilepsy. And God has answered different times. You understand? But today, anybody that is having any demonic assault against your mind, against your brain, against your thought realm, you are no more thinking straight, something is just happening to you, weird or whatever, or it's happening to somebody around you, and you can't even know what is, how, why is he misbehaving like that? We have authority. The Bible says we should pray in the name of Jesus and rebuke the devil. The word rebuke is not a gentle word. Rebuke means you talk to the person harshly. You discipline the offender. Rebuke is not like uh, you are begging. Uh, please, will you go out now? Eh? You should go out now. Eh? Why are you not going out now? That's not how to rebuke. You rebuke somebody as if you have arrested an offender and you want to discipline the offender. Rebuke the devil. And then we leave. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, Jesus did it in that Luke chapter 4. His disciples did it in Luke chapter 10. We have been given the same authority to do it in his name. And then when we pray, something happens. That is very good. So I want to pray with you. Shall we pray? Anyone having any sickness, any disease, especially demonically orchestrated sicknesses, or demon afflicting somebody, or oppressing somebody. The Bible says in Acts chapter 10, verse 13, that Jesus Christ of Nazareth was anointed of Holy Ghost and power, went about being the healing all that oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Jesus did heal people. And most of the people he healed, they were going through demonic oppression. So the devil is the oppressor that oppresses them. Jesus is the healer that heals them. You understand what I'm saying? And that Jesus lives in us today. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And he has given us the authority to go in his name and to do exactly what he was doing there. Casting out the really relieving people of their problems and bringing healing. Say, heal the sick that you meet there. Any sick person hearing my voice today, I want to pray with you. I want you to pray with your hand wherever the sickness is in your body as I pray. And if the person is having a demon, just place your hand on that person. The demon will get out. May manifest, may not manifest, but still will get out. Because he cannot disobey the authority that comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, everyone here in the sound of my voice, and they need salvation, I ask that the saving grace of the Almighty God will come upon you right now. And the conviction to get yourself back to your maker and to your Savior will come in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Number two, you are sick of any kind of sickness, demonically constituted sickness, or it's not just a sickness like a fever, like a malaria, like a stomach problem or whatever, it's actually a demonic problem. Even if you have lost your mind, even if something has happened to you and people are saying you can't get yourself again, it's a lie. Once you are still alive, you hear the word of God now, the anointing of God is coming upon you, I rebuke that spirit, unclean spirit, I rebuke that spirit of malady, I rebuke that spirit of, you know, mind, uh, misbehavior. Whatever touches your mind, whatever is trying to wrap your brain, I rebuke that devil in the name of Jesus. And I command that spirit to stop his operation in your life in the name of Jesus. And I command it to leave, 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 leave. Get out! In the name of Jesus. And I ask that the healing virtue of the Lord Jesus Christ come over you now. Wherever that presence of the devil has damaged any organ of your body, may you receive restoration, restoration, restoration. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Glory and honor to your name, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whatever you couldn't do, you are free to do them now. The devil is left, but you have to move and take action of faith to get yourself restored. Healing is already, healing power was already upon you. And it's going to keep working until every demon is gone and all part of your system is restored. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we pray. Mm -hmm. Until tomorrow, be healthy, mm -hmm. wealthy, and strong. Mm -hmm. God bless you. Mm -hmm.